Guys, back in December, the New York Times came out with an article about P-Hub, which is an adult entertainment website. I'll let you guys use your imagination in terms of which website I'm talking about. And they accused P-Hub of facilitating and profiting off of women who were participating in unconsensual sex and underage minors. Now, I just wanna make this clear. I 100% think that this is wrong. Okay, what P Hub was doing is wrong. Okay, 100% agree with that. However, the question is not do you disagree with that? Every reasonable person disagrees with that. The question is more about what happened in response to this. MasterCard and Visa decided that because of these allegations, they were going to stop processing payments for the website, effectively limiting P Hub's ability to make money and censoring the platform, okay? Response to this, P-Hub removed all videos that were not from verified accounts in which people have to send out IDs and things of that nature. However, when this happened, nobody cared because it was an adult website. And typically, adult websites are the training grounds for censorship right but the problem is that nobody cares or tries to defend adult websites from censorship because a lot of people see sex work as bad and immoral however this is where the censorship starts to get an inch and like us conservatives like to say if you give the government an inch they will take a mile and we usually apply that to the federal government however in this situation this is the shadow government make no mistake about it Big tech, Wall Street, corporate America are all a part of the shadow government, okay? Our politicians are bought and sold by them. When you see all this censorship going on right now, they're telling you, we run this. Those people are actors, the politicians. They're acting like they disagree on stuff. However, they've already been bought. We already know what we want them to agree on, on both sides. And that's just kind of how it goes. And now you're saying with somebody like President Trump, Wall Street in particular is now flexing its power to try to censor the president even more in order to make sure that he cannot even make a living. And the ironic part about all this is that the problem isn't even communism. It's woke capitalism caused by the gradual loss of American principles over time, over several successive generations. The people that run these companies do not value free speech, nor they have one iota of empathy for what the everyday American goes through on a day-to-day -day basis. Most of their actions are not motivated by objective principles of right and wrong, because really they have no objective principles, but rather on the fact that they don't wanna lose money and they want to accumulate wealth. And they will behave very differently based off which party is in charge of the government and what these companies perceive the public settlement to be about certain issues. Guys, remember, everything is a domino effect. If Wall Street says this is not okay, now small businesses have to respond. We already see Wall Street telling President Trump, hey, this is not okay, they're coming after him. And what that means is that small business owners are going to get ahead of it. And you're going to see that's going to trickle down to a lot of conservative radio hosts. And this is going to forever change conservative media, in my opinion. But before we get into that, my name is Greg Foreman, and you're watching A Black Conservative Perspective. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share A Black Conservative Perspective, a.k.a. A Leftist Worst Nightmare. You can also follow me on Twitter at GForemanBCP. Let's get it. So like I said in my personal statement, guys, we're starting to see this censorship expand into basically uncharted territory. Anybody who's associated with Trump, whether you're directly associated with him or indirectly associated with him, is getting the hammer, right? So let's first start with our favorite radio talk show hosts who have received threats of losing their jobs if they continue to talk about the election results. So Yahoo News did an article on this. A media company that employs right-wing talk show hosts, including Mark Levine, Ben Shapiro, and Dan Bongino, 
circulated a memo after the pro-Trump riots on Capitol Hill telling hosts to dial down allegations of election fraud or else face termination. Cumulus Media sent the internal memo to employees on Wednesday, according to Inside Music Media, the Atlanta-based company owns 416 radio stations throughout the country, many using a talk radio format with local and national right-wing personality. Now, this is interesting because Ben Shapiro has not contested the uh, election results. He's been pretty consistent about that. However, I do find it interesting, you know, how Mark Levine and uh, Dan Bongino are going to navigate around this, um, considering that, you know, they have been some of the president's strongest supporters. So as you can see, guys, the censorship is not just to Trump directly. It's to any potential person that is echoing anything that the president says or that may support the president anyway. And we all know, I mean, Ben Shapiro is kind of on the Trump chain, but he's kind of not, right? So, quote, we need to help induce national calm now. Cumulus, executive vice president of content, Brian Phillips, wrote in a memo the, the company, quote, will not tolerate any suggestion that the election has not ended. The election has been resolved and there are no alternative acceptable paths. Phillips added, quote, if you transgress this policy, you can expect to separate from the company immediately. So there you have it. They're telling them, listen, if you dispute the election results, if you say if you say anything different, then the, the election is over. Then you're going to be fired on the spot. That applies to anybody. Ben Shapiro, Mark Levin. Dan Bongino, basically shutting up any dissenting opinions and voices. The move by Cumulus came shortly before Google, Apple, Amazon ceased hosting social media app Parler. Similar in form to Twitter, Parler became popular with users who chaffed over perceived censorship of right-wing views. All right, guys, so in summary, even right-wing radio hosts are under attack. I mean, this probably applies to myself as well, too, being on YouTube. Obviously, YouTube has applied certain standards um, for talking about the election at this point. And we're getting to the point where it seems like if you want to continue to be a part of mainstream society, you have to toe a certain line. There are certain things that you cannot say if you want to be a part of mainstream society. That is what these companies are telling us. And the scariest part about this, guys, is not just the big tech censorship. But the financial censorship. Let's take a look. Stripe has come out and said they're going to stop processing payments for the Trump campaign website. Stripe Inc. will no longer process payments for President Trump's campaign website following last week's riot at the Capitol, according to people familiar with the matter. The financial technology company handles card payments for millions of of online businesses and e-commerce platforms, including Mr. Trump's campaign website and online fundraising apparatus. Stripe is cutting off the president's campaign uh, account for violating its policies against encouraging violence, the people said. The spokesperson for the Trump campaign didn't immediately respond to a request for comment. Stripe asked users to agree that they won't accept payments for, quote, high-risk activities, including for any business or organization that engages in, encourages, promotes, or celebrates unlawful violence to persons or property, according to its website. Now, I wonder if Stripe has applied this same standard for those that are selling shirts that say, no justice, no peace, or shirts that support Antifa, or merchandise that has any kind of rhetoric from the far left that may incite violence such as stop killing us or things of that nature right and that's my biggest problem with this whole censorship thing i understand the private company argument i really do but if they're going to censor i feel like they have to do it equally on both sides this is not equal what they're doing right now with president trump and the conservative talk show host at the heart of it, I understand that they're not necessarily going after conservative speech as much as they're going after the uh, conspiratorial aspects of um, speech that happens to align with more conservative views, right? I think that's a big difference. However, if the standard is that these conspiracies are harmful to people, right, and that's why you want to censor them, then you have to apply that same standard of speech being potentially harmful to left-wing talking points right when the left says no justice no peace or when they you know say their rhetoric that incites violence then you need to censor that 
And you can't say it doesn't because we've seen rhetoric, we've seen protests across the country, over 700 of them, for over a year. So you can't say that it doesn't incite violence and harm. And plenty of innocent people have lost their lives behind these protests. But yet there's no censorship of that. So, so to me, this is the biggest problem with this type of censorship is that it's not being applied fairly, right? One, I don't want any censorship. One, like in the ideal world, there's no censorship. However, I do understand the private company argument. I, I do get it, right? I think both sides have certain elements. I just think that if you're going to go with the private company argument, then you have to be consistent across the board. Now, Stripe is not also the only financial company. Uh... The Capitol riot has prompted some big banks and companies to pause political funding as well. Two of the biggest U.S. banks and other corporations said they are pausing or reviewing their political action committee donations in the wake of last week's riot at the Capitol. J.P. Morgan Chase and company and Citigroup Inc. said they are pausing all PAC donations to Republicans and Democrats in the coming months. Other companies, including uh, the Blue Cross Blue Shield Insurance Group and Marriott International Inc., said they would pause donations to Republican lawmakers who objected to President-elect uh, Joe Biden's Electoral College win after supporters of President Trump stormed the Capitol on Wednesday. Th this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. This is nothing but left-wing spin and narrative in regards to who should be censored and who should not be censored now jp morgan chase and Citigroup, they've been consistent if you're gonna pause it pause it to both now blue cross blue shield and marriott international are just attacking republican lawmakers who objected to uh joe biden's electoral college win but did they do that when maxine waters was trying to object to president trump or in 2004 when nancy pelosi was trying to object to George Bush uh, re-winning election? No, they didn't do that. All of a sudden, objecting to the Electoral College votes has become a unforgivable sin because you have people that are trying to respond to the citizens that they represent. If I go out there and I say, you know what, I'm going to stand up and make the voices of the unheard heard for whatever reason... That's an unforgivable sin. And you must be punished for that. And I don't think enough people are really looking at this side of it. Because that's why we're in this situation. People want their voices to be heard. It doesn't matter whether or not you believe the election was fraudulent. It doesn't matter. What matters is that these people do believe it. Okay? And the best way to try to calm them down is to try to be as transparent as possible. And to fight the source of these allegations with facts right that's the best way to do it but you have to be transparent about the facts and you have to allow those facts to be displayed in a way that cannot be contested and that's what was supposed to happen in the judicial system however the judicial system did not do that and i think that's a part of the reason why we're here is that a lot of arguments did not get heard in a court where the public can clearly hear and see the for and against argument all right guys so as you can see it's not just big tech it's Wall Street, it's big corporations, it's business owners. Everybody is working together as one unit that I call the shadow government in order to enact and enforce their moral standards and be the judge, jury, and executioner in terms of who can be a part of society and what businesses are acceptable in this society. And for any liberal who may be watching this, who is supporting this type of censorship, keep in mind what the conservatives have been saying. If you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. They don't know when to stop. So you're going to be next. Right now, the conservatives are dealing with it. However, if it gets to the point where the liberals are saying stuff that corporations don't really like, like, for example, tax the rich, right? Redistribute the wealth. Corporations don't like that type of language, do they? You might start to get censored. So again, keep in mind, what goes around comes around. We've allowed this to happen because we've given people an inch. We, we've laughed when they've done it to businesses or people that we uh, disagree with, and we just let it go. And now here we are. They're trying to literally erase the president of the United States, guys, from society. This, this is bigger than just banning him from the internet. They're trying to erase him from society. They're trying to make sure he cannot make a living. 
He cannot generate money. He can't feed his family. I'm pretty sure, I mean, he'll be fine. I mean, he's a billionaire. But at the same time, they are trying to effectively limit any way for this man to generate any kind of income or have any influence on society whatsoever. And they're doing it to a president, a sitting president. That, my friends, is dangerous. But anyways, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.